I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I was excited for this all weekend, honestly. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, uh, for people who don't know, uh, introduce yourself. Let people know who you are and what you're up to. Yeah, so um, I was the voice of Boo from Monsters, Inc. when I was three, uh, thanks to my dad, who was a storyboard artist on the movie. And um, yeah, since then, I just uh, got pulled out of voice acting pretty early on, so I wasn't like another Lindsay Lohan or Britney right. Spears. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now I'm just living life. I still like to make videos. So like I mm -hmm. uh, like learning animation and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I, I actually got wanted to ask you, does it does it bother you that people only know you as the voice of Boo? Because I knew you do other stuff. But I mean, do you it doesn't bother you at all that people are like, oh, you're the voice of Boo? I mean, when I meet someone for the first time, unless it's at a Comic Con or something, mm -hmm. obviously, oh, I'm I'm not like hi I'm Mary I'm the voice of Boo you know uh -huh. so right I, right right mm -hmm. I like people to know me first a lot of the times but I mean even if they don't even if they just know me as Boo I feel like if they continue to get to know me or like you know I mean they'll see soon enough that I do other things right you know? yeah like, that's true do you still <laughs> get recognized even though you were like you were like three when you did it do you still get recognized on the street so the last time I was actually recognized it was when I first started doing comic cons and okay. i did a comic con in pasadena and then later on i was at a um there was some event along magnolia boulevard i don't know the whole street got shut down before oh. COVID happened and uh, -huh. uh uh yeah someone was like are you mary gibbs and i was like what <laughs> oh okay so they actually yeah, knew you by they, name and stuff okay yeah, so they saw me at a comic con so that was oh uh, yeah, okay so they didn't just like you know How'd you get to, how'd you get into the whole, like, going to comic cons and stuff? I, I mean, I had no idea there was anything, like, that world even existed. And then oh. um, a company, a management company called CelebWorks, um, they manage a whole bunch of really awesome people. They manage um, the voice of Goofy, Mickey Mouse, oh. Barney. Uh, I mean, there's a hundred. Um, Diane, she's, like, the original voice of Poison Ivy. I mean, there's all these awesome people oh, yeah. that hang out with, and, uh, yeah, so they reached out and told me about this opportunity. And at first, I mean, I didn't really, I thought it was like a scam. I was like, what is this? <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> but yeah, right, they right, right. it's pretty nice. They just, uh, they'll message me every once in a while. Like, hey, there's a Comic-Con here. And they're yeah. going to call you out. And <laughs> yeah, you're going to meet people. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that must be so cool to be a part of something so impactful like Monsters, Inc. Because, I mean, you you were a part of that, a part of history, you know, how does, I mean, that must feel cool to be a part of history in a childhood movie and even a movie for, like, grown-ups. It's crazy. That's, I feel like yeah, that would be crazy for me. I mean, it's interesting, me. like, I mean, so many movies you forget about after, like, a year, you know? Right, like, right. What's cool, like, I, that I've noticed at Comic-Cons is, um, you know, I'm 23 and I'll meet people that are 23 and they grew up with the movie, you know, so they have a connection with it. Right. I meet grandparents that have a really a special connection because they showed their kids. Mm -hmm. And then the kids my age are now having kids and kids, yeah. young kids. Are, and it was just like yeah. staying alive, which is like mind blowing. And yeah, it's definitely, uh, I don't know. It's just the, the it's just trippy to think about like my voice right. is outside at Disneyland. Like what? Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. That's, that's really cool. And, and the fact that you're, you've made like an impact in the world, like you've made a dent in like history with cinematography and animation is just crazy to me you know yeah and what's cool That's, about monsters inc they were i mean they did a lot of brown groundbreaking things in uh yeah in terms of computer animation like the hair and uh on story right. with the monsters all coming in slow motion so yeah i mean it's definitely and uh in the 2003 i need to get a copy um 2003 guinness book world Re records i'm on like the 10th page Wow. It's a picture of me because uh, Monsters, Inc. was the fastest animated film to raise a million dollars at the time. Oh, oh, really? I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah, so that was a fun fact. <laughs> that's really cool. And to work with people, you know, work people like Billy Crystal and stuff. I mean, that's that's yeah. really cool in general. You know, I mean, do you even have memory? I, I remember you told me at Comic-Con that you have like a memory of like Billy Crystal and um, uh, John Goodman holding your hand at the red carpet, right? Yeah, yeah, because uh, I mean voice actors when they they used to record like back in the old days uh right. they would all get together in one booth and all interact together but now you know it was just me in the booth with the directors and everything and billy crystal's in his own booth and the first time from my memory i mean i was small but I, i'm pretty sure the first yeah. time i ever met billy crystal was at the actual um premiere and yeah, yeah. at the red carpet and 
there's this moment where I definitely recognize the voice, I, I oh. guess, because there's this moment where my back's turned and Billy Crystal walks up behind me and oh. he goes, boo, in his Mike Wazowski oh. voice. And I turn oh, around, okay. Mike Wazowski. <laughs> yeah, That's funny. he has some, you know, and I, he like, uh, I don't know, I was like 19. I just started teaching yoga at the time and he tweeted about me. He's like, the voice of boo is a 19 year old yoga instructor. Oh, wow. That's like, really oh, cool. cool. That's really cool. There, there's got to be some sort of Monsters Inc. reunion going to happen, right? I know, there has to I, be. My uh, managers for the Comic Cons, they're trying to, you know, figure out some some way for us to all connect. Uh, do bed. you keep in contact with any of the voice acting crew from Monsters Inc.? Uh, I mean, no, not not keep in contact. I was never really in contact with them. Uh, okay. With, I mean, <laughs> um, uh, John Goodman, when he was doing some recording for Monsters at University? Work, no, uh, this was Monsters at Work, I believe. Okay. Am I? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, which is the new TV series that's going to be on Disney Plus. Okay. Um, yeah. John Goodman. Oh yeah, so thank you, John Goodman. He wasn't actually <laughs> in the recording studio, but he he was in New Orleans, I think, and he got he was on a Zoom call, and I got to talk to him then. Oh wow! And that was like a couple, like a year and a half ago or something. So that's so you know. cool. That's yeah, so cool. that was like the the most contact I've been able to get. But. Yeah, I, I was telling my friends that you know what I'm gonna tell Mary is I'm gonna tell her thank you for not becoming crazy like other childhood <laughs> yeah. stars because yeah. it's you know some people lose it with the fame you know like when they get the fame as a as a child you know like uh the who's oh, the guy who played um the kid from home alone home kevin alone. from home yeah. alone he, i mean what's good about what like i'm definitely grateful for is the fact that i was a, just a voice actress right because you know of course around the movie there was some publicity like i would go to like events and like mm -hmm. talk to people and like i was in the newspaper and people magazine and like there was little right. things like that you know but it, it's still like I don't, I mean, I remember when I was in kindergarten, press would come to my kindergarten and like try to ask me questions, wow. I remember that. but I don't remember like walking on the street and like people huh. recognizing me, you know? Right. And so I think I had just enough to where it wasn't tip me over the edge. So it was, it was definitely like, I'm glad I wasn't really recognized when I was in college. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if, I mean, I went to so many different schools and like when one person found out, it would just like spread like wildfire. And I went to a really big college. I went to CU Boulder for a couple of years and I was living mm. in the dorms. Mm. And there was a couple of times where like random people would knock on my door and be like, are you the voice of Boo? I'm like, how do you even know where I live? You know? Oh, what the hell? Yeah, that's, so I, yeah, I, I that's really weird. Really weird encounters, but the, uh, the few yeah. I've had, I'm like, eh, I don't need any more. Like, yeah, that's cool. Cause I mean, you know, for some people like the fame can get to them, you know? I, and plus you were, you were in a really popular movie. So like, I doubt you would have gotten bullied because the kid who played Anakin in Star Wars got hella bullied because oh, no one really? liked them. But yeah, like they, he said, he said Star Wars ruined his childhood Damn. because people would, adults, kids would make fun of him and be mad at him like it was his fault, like the movie was bad or something. And that, I remember, like, yeah. I watched some little YouTube documentary on like the kids bop kids. Oh, really? They got bullied. Like, <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> but they like got the part, they're like, this is my. Key this is my break. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, and then, nope. But that's cool. Yeah, no, I didn't get bullied. I remember, like, in uh, elementary school, yearbooks would come out, and, like, the whole freaking mm -hmm. school would swarm me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, like, a, there was a bully who was bullied to everybody else, but she was nice to me, which I thought was oh, weird. Wow. I was like, why are you giving me special So were, were you a popular kid in school because you were, like, you were that kid? Like, oh, she was in Monsters, Inc. Were you that, like, the popular kid in school? Uh, I mean – maybe in elementary school if you could right. tell how popularity is then but yeah okay. I had middle school and it was my awkward phase and I like oh yeah, Woo. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I was not uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 I want to talk about your other stuff that's like not Monsters Inc related but like you you're, you have a vlog channel that's really cool actually I did, yeah so I just started that you know oh. been bored in quarantine so it's oh called, yeah it's yeah it's a boo grown up and the first video is like talking about Boo and, you know, I'll definitely incorporate it as I go to comic cons and um, yeah. stuff like that. But uh, yeah, mostly just about my life and like the most yeah. recent one, you know, I, I'm not, I've never been, I am don't want to be a voice actress, you know, I'm not trying to find. I saw that. I actually saw that. I, I liked that yeah, one the a lot. Most recent one. Oh, wow. thank you. Yeah. So it was this, the new, new project, new voiceover project is Heroes of Extinction. I'll be playing a character in that and it's an That's audio so cool. show, but they are. 
I mean, there's talks of like wanting to pitch it to Netflix and, you know, who knows, but. Right, right. But it's cool. Yeah. Like the fact that you even said if an opportunity presents itself, it, it's there for a reason. You should take it. That's really cool. I like that. And yeah, you, I, what I heard from that video, I thought that was, I thought you were doing really good. You just, it just Thanks. came out naturally for you. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That. Yeah, it's definitely harder than it looks to like, you know, change your voice. I, I've included this in the video, but there's one part where I'm like, could not change the inflection or like, you know, the inflection, inflection, whatever the word is. On oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and I just, mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to, you know. Right, right. Know, it's just hard. But, <laughs> but you think you think you would do like actual like in-person acting? I, I mean, I loved doing that growing really? up. Um, I definitely loved musical theater. Oh. And uh, yeah, I, I like I had this audition in like sixth grade where I froze in front of all the eighth graders. And, like, oh. really but I've been wanting to like maybe just t try an acting class or like, I don't know. Like when I was younger, I was so concerned with like what people thought about me that mm -hmm. like for improv, for example, it was like, I didn't want to put myself out there and like be judged or something. And now I have like way less concern. Mm -hmm. what people think. So you, you're like, like, you're like out there, like you're just doing what you love and you're posting yeah, about it. I, I love watching it. Honestly, just the fact yeah. that you're out there, you're not shy about it, which is cool. That's really cool <laughs> no, to see. Yeah. I definitely like to try new things and I'm like, you know, try everything once. Why not? You know? Yeah. Um, I saw, I want to talk about something that I actually saw on your Instagram, the whole bondage rope photos stuff. Oh yeah. Can you talk to Wait. me about that a little bit? Yeah, so it's called Shibari, uh -huh. and it was originally used in Japan as a form to bond their prisoners, and uh -huh. people would um, do all these intricate patterns to mm -hmm. show their status, and there's mm -hmm. all this really cool history, which I don't know all of it, I'm still learning, but uh, right. um, yeah, I have a few friends that are doing it just as, like, as an art form like it's just really yeah pretty. it is an art form i see it. it's like yeah, the photography is uh, really beautiful yeah and so I, I love photography and i love yoga and i love and like you know i thought there was one i didn't post a picture of it but there was this really cool wrap someone did on my legs and then i did like a headstand you know and just like in court, <laughs> yeah, I saw it, like, yeah. a cool picture so it's a uh, yeah, so um, I heard about it a couple times this week, mm -hmm. and then someone told me about like a mm -hmm. little class that was going on, and I'm like, why not? <laughs> and uh, that's uh, they really had cool. A, this really, it was like a shibari master there who travels around and does workshops, and he did suspension, which is like pretty gnarly, and so that's what I did. I got suspended and tied up, and yeah, it was cool. <laughs> I mean, that, how did it feel? Like, like how did that? It feel was like so. You know, there's different forms of like bondage. Some people like want it to hurt, and you know they have uh, like okay. they have uh -huh. hemp rope and jute uh -huh. rope, which is like uh -huh. a harder rope that'll hurt. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, this was nylon rope, so it didn't hurt me. And I used to do aerial acrobatics with those. Silks, oh wow! And uh, I'm wanting to get back into that recently, but um, so I'm used to being like hung upside down, and I like being up in the air and like stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like another form of acrobatics, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you're you're a very active person, like physically. Like I see you, like if you look at your Instagram, like you do yoga, which I heard is like the most hard. Like it's a hard, it's harder than it looks. People say. Oh, yeah, it, it's it, really it, hard. And I, uh, yeah, and I've always like <clears throat> been into yoga and like meditation and stuff. Uh, luck, like lucky for me, like freshman year of high school, I had yoga PE and as an option for my school, so. I was able to take that and then I got back surgery in 2012 and mm -hmm. really got into yoga yeah. after that and then started teaching it because I just loved it so much. So yeah, definitely. It's a lot harder. And I taught hot yoga, which is 104 degree room, like 40% <laughs> humidity. So it can get pretty hard, you know, but uh, yeah, it definitely, it heals you not just physically, but mentally. And yeah, it's nice. I also yeah. saw your, um, your video of when you had, you have scoliosis on your yeah. back. Yeah. I, I saw that. I was like, whoa i could not believe what i was seeing like you were your back was just out of line i was couldn't yeah, believe it i was like so mine was 47 degrees which you know a lot of people have reached out to me since i post that video and they're like i have you know 60 70 degree curves and i just wow. like, imagine like you know it definitely gets a lot more intense but yeah what was bad with mine was that it was projected to increase one degree every year for the rest of my life oh so wow it's like doesn't sound like a lot until I'm like 90 years old. And like, right, 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 right. So, yeah, it, uh, yeah, scoliosis diagnosed in seventh grade. I had to wear a hard plastic turtle shell brace for a year. I did like, you know. What, what was that like? Like having to walk around and have this on your body, like basically be a part of your body for a whole year. year and, 
it was I did not like it. Luckily, I only had to wear mine at night. A lot of people have to wear theirs 24 hours. Maybe it would have worked better if I did that. Um, right. Like people would wear it to school, all that. So luckily, I didn't have to do that. But I mean, it's literally just a piece of PVC or like yeah. plastic or whatever it's made out of. Just like, uh -huh. and you have these like um, Velcro in the front to lace yeah. it together, like a corset. A plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was no fun. <laughs> I'm uh, breaking out of that must have been so freeing, right? Like, yeah, and I mean, I definitely like post-surgery, you know, I have no pain. I don't have to wear a hard plastic brace. I'm able to do like, you know, before I was a gymnast and cheerleader and stuff, so I could do backflips and all that. Wow. Uh, there's no more backflips. You know, if I have a trampoline, I could still do backflip. But uh, uh, I, wow. uh but it's the things that I can't do, I don't really need to do. And like, uh, I kind of did an assessment. I'm like, why do I need to do a backflip in front of all these people? Is it just like a <laughs> thing? Like, yeah, probably. So it's like, yeah. I don't, you know, whatever. I'll show them that I'm cool in other ways. <laughs> yeah, you have you have other talents. And then uh, funny, if, if you Google Mary Gibbs, you know how they like, if you're a childhood star, they're like, oh, when they're, where are they now type thing? Oh, like yeah. there's a there's a picture of you and I think it's so cool of like you bench pressing and you're like you're like you like muscles are really toned and stuff. Oh, yeah. I or thought was that I so. Yeah, you were I, deadlifting. Yeah, deadlifting. Yeah, so I got like there was a part. I like I said going back to I just like trying new things and like mm -hmm. seeing what I like and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got into powerlifting for a few months and I was doing like you know a lot of like squats, deadlifts, bench presses, and yeah, I got up to the point uh i was able to deadlift 250 pounds like five times so it wasn't like my one rep max or whatever I, but anyway uh i kind of realized i uh realized that with all my body has been through it's like why put it under that much stress and deteriorate deteriorate it faster uh -huh. yeah so now i just do like less weight mm -hmm. and higher reps and more i don't know body weight stuff i do krav maga now too so Oh that's, wow, uh, really? Yeah, self defense used by the Israeli military. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a that's actually a tough one. I, I hear a lot of like UFC fighters like train that and like that's really cool actually. How's that been yeah, actually then? It's been fun. I've been doing that for uh a few months and yeah, I mean it's definitely a lot of work, but I feel I definitely feel just a lot more confident already and I'm still like at the very beginning. That's really cool. And that's... I love the whole like belt system. I'm like, ooh, I'm a white belt. I can't wait till I'm like <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool but who who had what got you into krav maga like who told you about it how'd it interest you that's a good question i was thinking about that the other day and i'm not really sure i know like i have friends who have been into mma mixed you know mixed martial arts and since i'm like a 411 you know 120 pound like female mm -hmm. uh i mean i've always wanted to take some sort of self-defense class and, you know, just the basic, like, lady self-defense classes, I'm, yeah, those are good, but I want to, like, actually be able to, like, in any situation, get out of it. Mm -hmm. And Krav Maga teaches you, if there's a gun in your face, how to get out of it. If someone's yeah. coming at you with a knife, how to get out of it. So, yeah, yeah just, like, uh, yeah, I, again, I forget how exactly I heard about Krav Maga specifically, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, once I did, I just knew, I was like, yeah, that's definitely a Is there all around is there is there anything else you want to try that seems interesting to you that you yeah i mean obviously in quarantine yeah. you can't do everything right now but is there anything you want to try yeah uh i mean there's so, like every day i'll i'm like a dog i'm like squirrel oh let me tell you. <laughs> uh, like right now there's this um i went on a road trip up to lake tahoe i love road tripping and traveling and i stuff. love lake tahoe yeah, and I, it was my first time going there in the summer, and my friend has a cabin up there. It was beautiful. It was really cool. And uh, But when I was driving up there, I stopped by, like, three different lakes, and I was, like, I had my dog, and I was, like, how cool would it be just to have something to, like, go out on the lake, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. board or something. But I found out about this thing called the Oru Kayak. It's, a or, like, an origami kayak, and it folds up. It's, like, 20, 30 pounds this big and you could unfold it and it fits your you could fit your dog in it people bring their dogs and uh it's really cool so right now i'm trying to like manifest a kayak and get into that more and just like get more on the water and like i really want to learn fishing and like i don't know kayak that's so cool and fishing, that's on my i've never heard of that that seems really cool actually yeah it's like yeah just again i love to travel and I like if i pack my car up i, I don't want to like have space for this like huge mm -hmm. 
big plastic kayak. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I, I was originally thinking an inflatable paddle board, but I think the foldable kayak is. Uh, that actually sounds pretty. I've never heard of that, but that sounds really cool. Actually. Yeah. Sounds like the best way to kayak, honestly. Yeah, right? <laughs> I know. The other way is like it's just such a hassle. Do you do you have any phobias? I used to be. This is like that's a good question. So like, when I was three years old, three to five, I really good friends with this girl, and we used to just like always dance around without any clothes on because we're like little girls. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. And um. I don't know why she did this. We were friends after this. I don't, it's very foggy, but she pushed me into the fireplace so much where my whole left side of my arm got burned and I was like sitting in the doctor's office and they had to pick all the little scabs. So it was, it was, the fireplace was on. Oh yeah. The fireplace was burning. Wow. She pushed me into the fire. <laughs> I should have said. And yeah, it just burned my whole left side of my arm. I'm, I'm lucky I don't have like gnarly scarring. Yeah. But, uh, for a long time after that, I was afraid of fire. I would not light a match. I remember in Girl Scouts, you have to light a candle to like graduate. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I, wow. <laughs> you know, How I'm long did like, that last for? Well, it lasted until high school and I was like, I'm done. And then I learned how to spin fire. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, I, was, I saw that. I thought that was yeah. so cool, too. Yeah, so in high school, I, I only tried it once, and I, like, you know, I was just kind of over it, you know, and uh, my I spun a lot of hoop, and my friend had a fire hoop, and she was like, well, you want to try this? And I just kind of went for it, and uh, definitely made me less afraid. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I did it once in high school, and now I just recently started getting back into it, um, and this is with a rope dart this time, so. A rope dart. Yeah, I've officially spun it three times, so I'm a... Uh, it's getting it's getting better every time. It's fun. But you have no phobias I get, now. I get you're not. There's on my fingers. Oh yeah. Wow. So now, I mean, you know, I have a fear of like dying from like natural disasters, like oh, wow. or, like stuff like that. Of being caught in. A, but I don't want to like. I don't want my house to like burn on fire while I'm in it. I, <laughs> I don't I've, think about uh, that too much. Honestly. Yeah. I, I, I've always I've always been afraid of the ocean. Oh yeah. I'm so I'm so afraid of like everything in the ocean. Like everything's bigger sharks yeah. even like regular fish that won't like bite you or anything just they're just bigger and you're slower in there and everything's yeah. so dark it freaks it's me out when i'm surfing and like my feet are dangling i'm like oh this is creepy <laughs> uh, i want uh, if you don't mind i want to get into like a more personal subject um like uh your relationship with your dad yeah uh you know most people know that he's the reason you were in monsters inc in the first place right yeah. But I mean, what if you can like let us know how he impacted your life even after Monsters Inc. What were like, oh, yeah, I yeah. bet he was he was a big impact on you, obviously. Yeah, he, I mean, definitely. I'm growing up. Uh, I was an only child, you know. I was, uh, you know, teenage years happened, and I turned into like a bitchy teenager. And he was in Northern California working at Pixar. Sophomore year, me and my mom moved to San Diego. And then me and my mom moved to Hawaii. So I just kind of saw him less growing up. And so like, honestly, he was always an amazing dad, like always a hundred percent, like always there for me, always that. But we were like, didn't have the best relationship throughout high school. And then I was really lucky and really grateful that like, you know, as I grew up, I kind of realized like, you know, and he kind of realized too, like we don't, instead of really thinking of like a father daughter dynamic, which it so was, we just became more of like friends. And right. I don't even know how it morphed from like, I, again, I probably just the older I got and the more I just like turned less bitchy and like, you know, <laughs> actually wanted to hang out with him and realized that he was actually really awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we just like became really good friends. And like for my 21st birthday, uh, he came to Vegas with me. I didn't want to bring any friends. He, I brought my dad um for my 23rd birthday he was there for all my birthdays um but when um let's see like concerts he would be there my uncle for uh this past christmas bought me and my cousin concert tickets and we were going to stay the night in the at the queen mary this fancy hotel and oh, there, wow. it was a three-day festival reggae festival and my cousin randomly was like i don't like reggae like she didn't want to go mm -hmm. which is whatever and uh <laughs> my uncle was like well mary you can have the ticket just bring whatever friend like you want to bring and i was like my dad's coming so it's like that's the kind of relationship we had where like you know we would party together we would go to the bar like i was wow. his wingman we would like always just yeah we'd like party hard together we'd be in new orleans and 
for October for our birthdays for like four days straight, just like after like 6 a.m. every day, just like completely wasted. It was Gee, great. And, that sounds really <laughs> yeah, cool. No, that so sounds like, really cool. I'm just like, so like for people who don't know uh, who are watching this, like my dad passed away in April. It was like completely yeah, unexpected. Yeah, rest in peace, honestly. When I saw yeah. that, I was like, wow. wow. And was he was like 55, cool. just no health problems before. Just yeah, he's like, super young. So 55 yeah. is super young. And like, you know, it's definitely... I prefer that it happened like, you know, like that than like knowing that he, you know, knowing that he had some condition or something like watching him die, you know, it was just a heart attack. And, you know, we found out there were some like heart attacks in the family. So it was hereditary. Um, you know, it wasn't from like, you know, anything bad, but uh, yeah, it was just um, because we had such a good relationship. Like if he died while I was in high school, I would be so devastated. Like, I would be, I don't know what I would do, but like now, obviously I'm devastated. I like, it's awful. I would, I want to have so much more time with him, but right. because I had so much, much like good times with him, even though it yeah. wasn't a small concentrated, like couple years, mm -hmm. it was like, it's easy to focus on the positive when they were right. Positive, so yeah. your last, your last memories with your dad were like very positive and very, like yeah. a very close relationship. Yeah, so that makes it better. That's really that's really cool. Is there is there anything that your dad taught you or your dad has said to you that you stick in your mind even today? From the, the fact that like my dad came from a very he was one of six kids. Um, my grandparents, so his parents are were from the Church of Christ. So that's like the cult version of Christianity. Yeah. Super <laughs> like he could not go in the pool with other girls because it was mixed bathing couldn't dance with girls devils dancing like it oh. was gnarly and so my dad ever since he was born like my grandma gave me like old drawings of his of a, uh, you know he was drawing since he was like two you know and mm -hmm. they're good and he was always like you know not just drawing he wasn't just an amazing artist but he was a storyboard artist so like he was always yeah. thinking about story and like writing stories and like super creative and um just the fact that he turned his passion, you know, and then like 18 years old came around and he's like, dad, I'm going to art school, you know, and he had the balls to like know what he wanted to do and turn his passion into his job. Like despite all, everyone in his life saying, no, you can't do it. You know, it's like wow. just the fact, you know, he never, I don't even know if I told him that I got that from him or, you know, but like, you know, he never, he never like told me that lesson specifically, but just like no, knowing his life and like, yeah, you know how he got to where he was. It's like, damn, that's a, he was a director at freaking Disney and Pixar. Yeah. Like, I mean, so. if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have the character of Boo and, <laughs> and the character of Boo is like literally the main plot of that story and it's impacted and it's inspired so many people, you know, so. Yeah. And yeah, he definitely, uh, worked on a lot of movies and definitely put a lot of, uh, impact on people so and and it's crazy nowadays where people you know they want to pursue their dreams and people around them aren't supportive of them like oh you can't do it or everyone else is doing it so why should you even try it's you know like you just just take your shot man you know just yeah. do it you know that no one else is going to stop you except yourself and if yeah. people aren't telling you you should go pursue your dream then they shouldn't be around man like yeah, this exactly. and your dad really did something great with just saying I'm gonna go do what I love and that's so awesome that's so inspirational honestly that's so yeah, no, that's is. so cool to hear and the fact that you're still following in that from your dad you know that's that's just as, as great you know yeah, that's so I mean, cool he definitely like you know subconsciously instilled my mindset of like anything is possible yeah you know, I'm never like I never think of something and like shut myself down like no I can't do that it's always like okay, how am I going to get there? <laughs> you know? I mean, no, you, you definitely have overcome a lot. The whole scoliosis thing impresses me a lot. Like, holy shit. Like the fact that you overcame that. And yeah. to this day, you're still, you're doing all that yoga. You're doing, you're doing like the, the deadlifting stuff. I'm like, holy yeah. shit. I mean, like this girl. Yeah. Uh, I definitely going through something like surgery or just healing or whatever. I mean, it makes you mentally strong for sure. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, everything compiled together. Is there, is there anything growing up? Cause you said like your middle school years or your high school years were like your, you're, you're like, everyone had their like emo days, I guess. <laughs> but like, yeah. was there anything in specific that was just keeping you like down or was there like, what were, what were your rough times? You know? Cause yeah, I mean, so sixth grade happened. I, so I got, I struggled with acne growing up and 
I got acne before anybody else got acne and like that's not me being dramatic like I got no, acne no. really early and yeah. uh I was just oily. It wasn't really cystic scarring, like really deep acne. Yeah, I saw I saw that video actually, your acne video. Yeah, and so that it was just like, but it was just really like, I had it all over my back and my chest. I didn't wear bathing suits or dresses or tank tops, and like, you know, very yeah, insecure got, about your yeah, super yeah. insecure. Like, got made fun of, got called like Mary's Pizza Kitchen, like all this shit. Like, yeah, I was like, people are mean, yeah. and like everyone's bullied for something. I get that, so, but yeah. that was just, like you know what I went through so that was like the biggest thing and I was just I don't know I was just kind of like socially awkward a little bit like I just wanted to kind of like be home and crochet and like do art and like didn't really want to like you know I was a cheerleader but I didn't hang out with the cheerleaders I just wanted you know I could I was very like the thing about me it's not like it's not like I hung out with people and people like didn't like me didn't want me to be around them it was just right like, I just didn't want to be around people yeah like I was just kind of like eh I don't That's, know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And I would, but I would bounce around to different friend groups, like you know, people. I would yeah. be friends with a bunch of different people, but not a lot of really deep connections with people. And I just kind of like did my own thing. And like, I went to six different high schools, and I know like I had a couple of the high schools. I didn't even hang out with people at the high school. It just like, yeah, my friends were always older, and just like I don't yeah. know. It just like did my own thing. Like, yeah, I don't know. yeah. I think <laughs> I was. I think in high school, I think I was definitely like not to not to like toot my own horn, but I think I was definitely more mature than everyone around me. Yeah. So, and I was always friends with like my teachers and like older people. Yeah. And yeah, the people around me were just, they, they didn't talk about things I was interested in or they didn't talk as mature as I did, I guess. And yeah. it's just, it's, it sucks. Cause even today I still deal with people like that. I'm like, why, why can't we all just talk like human yeah. beings, like adults? It's, it's yeah, so ridiculous. It's true. Do you, do you, do you get any like creepy encounters like from fans? Like, uh, I mean, not to say name, not name names, but like, you know, do oh, you ever yeah. get like creepy, like peep people? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's any extra creepy than like the average girl would get on Instagram nowadays, you know, like, I don't know. People are creepy on the internet. Like, I, yeah. uh, <clears throat> you know, I think like <clears throat> the creepiest thing that I could like comes to mind, which I haven't had too many, like really creepy encounters. Uh, luckily. That's good at least. Yeah, you know, I just, you know, um, again, just a normal creepy Instagram guy. But uh, yeah, this person reached out to me on Facebook, I think, and it was like years ago. I don't know, but I I forget the message, but it was it was creepy. It was like I don't know, it might have been something sexual and monster. Right, I was gonna ask, was it something sexual? Yeah, I think it was something like sexual. I don't know, but then his profile picture was like a picture. I think you could see his face in the background, but it, it was a boo doll with her face like really close up to the camera and his like hands are, were around like the boo doll. I don't know if he was strangling her. That's like what my memories are, but you know, it was just like, and then I blocked him and I was like, what? Like, oh uh, man, that. Yeah, that was like the creepiest, Ooh. but luckily that was like the only really creepy thing I've had to like, I was, just, and it, you know, that it was really, yeah. wow, whoa. But, oh. Yeah, it was like, what and that yeah because he's having the message and i saw boo in his profile picture and i was like weird you think he was a, a too much of a fan like he just he just yeah, had I some mean, sexual fantasy so with boo or something but, who knows? Oh, that, yeah but oh shit that's that's creepy as hell yeah, I, how, how's your how's your personal life going though like uh you're are you, do you have a dating life with this whole quarantine uh, uh you know i try to have a dating life <clears throat> but yeah i mean it's hard to like do anything uh yeah i was like see this one guy for uh -huh. a little bit and then he was like was seeing this other girl before me which is totally fine first time hanging out he was like oh we're not seeing each other i was like okay that's fine and we're uh -huh. just like taking it slow taking it easy whatever and then make plans to hang out one day and he was like can we hang out asap and i was like yeah i'm just like doing something we can hang out later he texts me okay i made plans and then just like ghosted and then uh he's friends with our our parents are friends so my mom reaches out to his mom and apparently he hung out with the ex-girlfriend on sunday and he just like didn't reach out to me so wow like, after two weeks and i'm like whatever I don't care. how is how is somebody <laughs> rejecting you like you're just, <laughs> like dude you're so like like all my friends, my 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 girlfriends, my my guy friends, they're also they all say like, dude, she's so pretty, like oh, like 
And yeah. dude, I'm like, and you're telling me that guys are what? Like how, dude? No way. <laughs> I don't know. She uh, must have been pretty special. Uh, actually, can I? Can we talk about your tattoos a bit? Because I really like your tattoos a lot. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, what are what is the shoulder ones and then the boo one? I like a lot. Yeah. So I got I have these two mandalas. Um, they're similar. They're similar. One's a flower of life. One's a lotus. This one is original storyboard artist by my dad. Oh I'm wow. Sure. And so I always wanted something boo related. Um, uh huh. And that's a little more meaningful. Let's see. I got a lotus flower on the back of my neck. Okay. Of compassion down my back. Uh -huh. I got a whole sleeve on my leg and an ankle tattoo. And a foot yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, what, what's your late? What are your latest one? What's what was the last one you got? The uh, last one was the boo one. Mm -hmm. I just got that after my dad passed away, and uh. Yeah, that was my first one in like a while, like a couple years. So I kind of, when I was turned 18, I got some money from being boo, right? Like just a little chunk. They actually gave you money from being boo when you turned yeah, 18? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't a ton, but it was enough for me to like go to Australia and blow up money on tattoos. <laughs> that was that's cool. It. That's really cool. But, that's uh, that's what the leg one, right? Uh, Well, yeah. Well, I pretty much like when I was 18, I just kind of went on a little spree, but the leg one took three years. So like I started with... <sighs> And then I got the gypsy from one artist and then I like waited and then I wanted to get something above it. So I got something above it from a different artist. And then after a while I was like, oh, I want these to like blend together more. So I got a different artist to like fill in yeah. the pieces. So yeah. Is there, any, is there anything you're trying to get in the future? I mean, I definitely love tattoos. I have a sleeve on my left thigh and I've always wanted a sleeve on my right arm. Mm -hmm. um but now that i have this awesome like boo tattoo i don't want to like distract from it you know makes so, sense okay. yeah i'm d debating like you know if, if something right now i'm satisfied you know but like mm -hmm. i'm sure i'll get more <laughs> yeah i'm fucking this this whole arm is taking like a whole year to make and I, yeah. i'm getting i'm with quarantine my appointments are even slower now so oh yeah it's I so nice that, when i got the boo one i actually met the tattoo artist at a comic-con and he does a really a lot of awesome disney tattoos and that's like, really cool like that yeah. really looks like a storyboard type oh no and he does he's, does sketches like he tattoos really cool sketches so i knew i wanted to get it from him but yeah when i got a tattoo we had to like have the the clothes side on the door and everything like it was what? under undercover and this guy this what con was the sign where was he located he is located in northern california i forget exactly where i drove like 40 minutes from marin county okay northeast i think okay. i don't forgetting the name back then, uh -huh. maybe. okay but uh yeah i forget what con comic con it was i actually met one of his friends first who was a wrestler at the comic con and uh he was like oh my friend wants to get your autograph and he's a tattoo artist and i was like uh -huh. oh i love tattoos let me get his instagram that's and really I cool i followed him for like a year and then he came up to me and he was like hey that's I'm really cool artist <laughs> so that's really cool uh, you know, you doing a lot of stuff and being open to stuff. Do you have any things on your bucket list? Do you have a bucket list? Like things you definitely want to do? Uh, <clears throat> I definitely want to travel all around the world. Hopefully hit all the continents. That'd be cool. Uh, I built out a van once uh, in Colorado. I built out a sprinter van with this guy I was dating and that we lived in it for a few months. And it oh, took wow. living with him in the van to realize that I didn't want to be with him. So I gave him the van. Wow. And, uh, but that being said, it's on my bucket list to build, either build out another van or like build out a teardrop trailer or like an RV or like something like mobile where I could like, I don't need to live in it. Like I, I'm kind of at the point in my life where I'm like, it's good to have a home base and I don't need to be a nomad right. all the time. But like, just to be able to like get up and go, that's uh -huh. cool. And that's I cool. want to, um, that, so an RV. And then I also want to, learn and get a sailboat at some point learn wow it. okay yeah my uncle's really into sailing we've been sailing and i just want to like be able to sail <laughs> I don't yeah, know. no i mean yeah that's cool <laughs> i mean i, 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 go to Hawaii. I, I might i might be afraid of the ocean but i think sailboating would be really cool yeah so i don't know but my list is like so long i can think of like a thousand things can i can i can you tell me about the guy with the van <laughs> is that is that uh, a story you could talk about <laughs> yeah i mean it's not too nuts we like he was like my one of my like my first like real relationship like oh, how old are you years i'm 23 so how old were you then 
Oh, uh, 18. Okay. Yeah, 18. So I didn't like 18 and 20. And uh, yeah, I mean, we met, I was in Boulder where I like went into a climbing gym once and he was working the front desk and like, I walked out and he like chased after me and pretended he's like, he took his phone out of his pocket and was like, did you leave your phone on the counter? And I was like, no, I have my phone. And he's like, oh, and then started conversation with me and got my number. And then like three months into the relationship, he's like, yeah, that was my phone. I'm like, wow. That was <laughs> yeah. I did not think of that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we met super cute, like natural, you know, whatever, hung out. And, but it just became like, you know, I taught yoga I was really passionate about that and he never once went to one of my yoga classes, but I always went to the climbing gym and hung out with him and his friends climbing. Um, he would never hang out with my friends. Like he was just really socially awkward around my friends. So it just became like me just hanging out with him a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And you know, we, it was like, you know, we traveled together. We went to Thailand together. We like had a lot wow. of fun together, but uh, built out the van together, but it was just like, you just kind of realize I'm like, okay, two years, I'm not like super happy. So yeah. I, and I, I was just really tired all the time. I didn't really notice, know the signs of depression. Like the past, I've had two, two year relationships. Are people even still listening? Sorry to like bring up ramble, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I've had like two, two year relationships, but where was I even going with this? I got off track. Cause I was like, I don't need it. You've been in two, two year relationships and you said you, you didn't notice the signs of depression. Oh yeah. And I just realized in both of them towards the end, I've just been sleep. I was sleeping a lot, super stressed out, super irritable. Oh, yeah. And I, they would make, try to make me think it was a problem with me. And I'm like, wait, this is a problem with you not making me happy. So, yeah. and, you wow. know, it took me, you know, and I've learned a lot from that, but yeah, that no, was good. I mean, they were both fine gentlemen ish. Oh well, man. That... So much, but uh, yeah. That's, that's, learn. that's crazy. Cause I've, I've been in a two year relationship and um, my problem was that, she was the only woman that because growing up I didn't like have women like notice me or women didn't girls didn't have crushes on me uh -huh. and so when I finally had my first girlfriend which was I was a junior in high school um she lived in San Francisco I live in Imperial Valley where you came so that's like a nine hour drive from here mm -hmm. and uh she cheated on me in the first seven months mm -hmm. but I thought in my head I'm like oh I love her like she's the only woman who's ever gonna like yeah. ever give me attention so I like forgave her and we were together for another year and a half and I thought things were fine until like she just she broke it off with me in 2017 yeah and mm -hmm. I was like she just fell out of love with me at that point and yeah. uh and it it's hard man when people just let you go like that yeah it's, no it is I mean it sucks being rejected obviously like yeah 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 I mean you know even this other guy who just like ghosted me it's like no matter if you hung out with them for like two years or you know one month it's like hmm, what's wrong with me you know you, you can't yeah. Like, have those yeah questions but then you just kind of have to be like just know your worth and you know I kind of realized I'm like I went and like spun fire that night for the first time and I was like you know what I'm awesome yeah <laughs> and he's not gonna let and he's not gonna let myself tell me otherwise you, you know? are Mary Gibbs you are absolutely awesome <laughs> but I want to I want to like it's just so crazy that I mean the fact that I have you here on the podcast like talk, I'm talking to like one of the, like the greatest like most notable icons in cartoon cinema and yeah. you know because that movie that movie is scientifically and you know it shows it talks a lot about you know it, it's a lot of character development too with Sully and with his relationship with Boo mm -hmm. and the, the fact that you know Sully was the stuck up guy who didn't care about anything except winning that record or just being the best monster, which he was a monster, like personally, like even the fact that he didn't scare people, but he was just this egotistical dude yeah. until you, Boo, comes into his life and he cares for something else and something that's supposed to be feared. That is, it's the monster in their eyes. Yeah. And, you know, it's the development between Sully and Boo is just a relationship that, you know, you don't see nowadays, most of all, nowadays, like, it's some it's a timeless movie and you know i i know i speak for myself and other people watching and listening thank you thank you for doing that honestly yeah. and and just thank you for just being so humble and nice honestly <laughs> oh yeah my pleasure it's, it's it was so cool and yeah uh but i i think uh i think that's gonna do it for the podcast i've had a, a fantastic time though you've, you've been so nice you've been so awesome yeah, and thank you for having you, me yeah uh, let people know where they can reach out to you and let people oh, yeah, know what you're so up to I uh, 
yeah, my vlog is Boo Grown Up on YouTube. And oh, yeah, please Instagram check that out. Instagram is Mary M. Gibbs. And then I'm also going to be doing that new voiceover project that's called Heroes of Extinction. Uh, I'll be posting more about that on my vlog and my Instagram. So you can just follow me on those to so stay tuned for that. But. Uh, oh, wait. Um, do, you, or, do you have any cons planned for the future? Uh, one got booked in 2021. I, I oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Like, I had cons this year. I was supposed to go to Vegas mm -hmm. and a couple other places. But, yeah, you know, whatever. Oh, uh, the quarantine, yeah. Yeah, so I know that I have one officially, I think, that got, I don't know if it was rescheduled or just new booked, but yeah, I'll post about that one too. I'm not exactly sure. So somebody in chat is wants to see your, wants to show off your biceps. Could you do that? You show off your, your strong yeah. biceps. <laughs> oh, dude, you could kick my ass for sure. I already know that for sure. You can kick my ass. I, I know that. I've been working out All I've been doing is prop maga. Normally yeah. I go to the gym, but it's been a, it, yeah. so you, you, you could probably like beat beat all my friends asses dude you you do krav maga you work out and they're out here like they're you're they're not as tough as you for sure i know that for well, sure. you know again being a small like girl that people think is defenseless i gotta like surprise them. are you really 411 because i remember when i met I you am, yeah because yeah, i was like i don't remember you being like 411 i thought you maybe you were like five three or something i had heels on i don't think i would have worn heels to comic-con but uh no. i don't know i don't like it's weird but it's people tell me a lot that they think that I'm taller because I'm proportional. Mm -hmm. you know, like smaller people, like, you know, legally small people that are like a little. Yeah. Small. Yeah. I don't know. It's just weird. And I sound like I kind of sounded mean saying it, but I've just been told that more times than I can count. No, but no, no. It's fine. Like, it's fine. You're proportional. So you look tall. I'm like, uh, thanks. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, also, also, I love, I've, like I said before, I love the hair. Like the hair is very unique and different from like what I see all the time. Is it is it hard keeping it that way? Is it? Uh, no, I just wake up and go. <laughs> really, I wash my hair with a shampoo that has sea salt in it. I had dreadlocks in high school, and I was way more concerned with like what I looked like. And uh, I would get them tightened every month with a crochet hook, and like did all this research that that's, that's actually like pretty bad for your hair if you do it a lot. I've used like crochet oh, okay. times, but uh, yeah, I literally just wash it with sea salt and then rip them apart when they get stuck together. No oh, man, that's cool. Do you plan on keeping it for a long time, or are you, you going to get rid of it soon? Um, <clears throat> well, like I said, when I had them for two years in high school, I combed them out, mm -hmm. and so I know that you are able to comb them out. I know people who've had them for like five years and combed them out, but I mean, in the foreseeable future, I mean, I love having them. I shaved my head and I grew out my natural hair, and I finally had like long natural hair, and I was just like. I want it dreaded again. It was just, I didn't like brushing it all the time. And like, my hair is just really flat and thin and like, bleh. but with dreads, it looks like I have volume all the time. Yeah. I mean, it looks really dope. It, lo it honestly looks really yeah. dope. So I have a super fan in the chat. She says for real monsters Inc is my favorite movie, Disney movie. I'm low key freaking out right now. Thank you for, e thank you for everything, especially shaping my childhood and millions of others. That's Mary, awesome. that's my, that's, that's my friend Sa her minute, Sam. Can you say hi to her? Sam? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sam. Nice she's, to meet you virtually. <laughs> she's a super fan. And she was like freaking out when I told her, like, oh, Mary Gibbs is going to be on the podcast. She was like oh, really freaking awesome. out. Cause, well, yeah. And, and uh, honestly, thank you for being here. And thank you just for being so humble, nice, and going to cons and meeting your fans. And, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so cool that you do this. And it's so cool. It's so cool that I actually got to meet you. And it was, it was, so, it was such an honor. Yeah, Comic Con is all the people that I get to meet. So. Yeah, it was such an honor to have you there because I live in such a small town that, you know, the fact that you were there is like, holy shit. Like, you were actually 50% of the reason why I went to that con. Oh, nice. <laughs> you, you and the, the, um, the guy who was in uh, Little Rascals, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was there. That, I remember you were so shy to meet him, right? You were, like, really oh, nervous. And I'm never, like, I, I go to these Comic Cons. And I don't eat, I haven't even watched a lot of movies, so I'm honestly not phased by most people just because I don't know who they are. Oh, okay. But yeah, that little rascals guy, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> he's really ha he was really <laughs> handsome too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're watching when I was a kid too. And he's really handsome now too. I was surprised. I was like yeah. I was like, whoa. I was like, whoo. <laughs> I was sweating a bit. But yeah, all right. Mary Gibbs, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And I do appreciate yeah. taking your time to talk to somebody as as in this small podcast as myself. And but, I'll, yeah. I'll take a picture of your coding brand. I love it. I love the design. I was actually, uh, Oh I yeah. Did, yeah. I did laundry and like I had the shirt, I don't know, 
my, it's just a pile of clothes. And like my mom saw that shirt. She was like, wow, that's really cool. Where is that from? And I was like, oh, that's uh, my friend's company. I need to take a picture. Uh, of. So. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you even <laughs> liked the design. I was like, holy shit, she liked yeah, it. No, it's cool. Yeah, and if you ever want another design, let me know. I will send one out to you for sure. Awesome. Because if you want any more. But yeah, thank you again, uh, Mary Jade. I hope you have a pleasant day. Uh, thank you, everybody who tuned in and watched. Uh, Mary Gibbs, everybody, for the podcast. Bye. All right. Bye.